This is part three of the chapter five companion video series, sound classes and audio volumes. In this part, we're going to talk a little bit about attaching sound cues to meshes in your environment so that we can just kind of compile them together so that when you drop in a new instance of your mesh, it would have a sound already set up to it so that you can um, populate your environment a little bit easier. So for instance, the thing I'm going to be working with is this generator. And I want to have this generator queue attached to it so that whenever I drop that generator in, it always comes with it. So one thing I do want to note with my um, generator queue sound, since it's going to be populated when I drop in the object, I can't really set up the details with that. So the one important thing I did need is I did need to set the attenuation for it. So I do have an attenuation node added to my generator queue. So let's get started. So the first thing we need to do is we need to make sure that we are creating an easy to find folder to create our um, actor blueprints in. So I'm just going to create a new folder and call it like my blueprints or something. I don't know, just so it's really easy to find. And in here, what we want to do is we want to make an actor blueprint. So we're going to right click and we're going to choose blueprint class. And what we want to choose in here is the actor, not any of these other ones. We're creating an actor. So I'm going to select that and it's going to pop in a new one. And then let's give it a new name that's easy to find. So we'll call it like generator um, live or something like that because it's going to have the sound on it. So that means that this is going to be a generator, ob you know, placeable object that has audio associated with it. You know, as long as the name is kind of obvious with that. So the next thing we want to do is we want to find, um, well, let's open it up first. And we want to find um, our objects to put in here. So what we're going to need is we're going to have to find that generator and we're going to want to find um, eventually the sound. So let's locate that generator. And let me move this out of the way. I get a it's called generator. Let's see if I can select off of it. There it goes. And it's this generator mesh right here. So let me see if I can get this on my screen so you can see what's going on. I'm just gonna drag and drop it in. And let's position this so it's at the origin. Is it already? I guess it is. That's nice. So if we look around, it's just kind of sitting there and that's what we want. And let's see, what's next? We want to find our sound. So let me, I did that one in the sound effects and it's this generator cue. So I'm going to drop that in and I'm going to position it a little bit higher and notice since I already had that attenuation node inside of it, it makes it a little bit easier to deal with. And um, we can see that it's pretty big, but it's going to be a really loud generator. I wanted to make sure that it filled up that space. So you know, if you don't see that, you might need to go back and edit your generator queue because it might not have attenuation set with that. So now what we want to do, oh, I guess you could also set, if you need to, you can set the attenuation here. I prefer just to use the node, but if you, you know, it's good practice, but if you did forget, oh, we need to check that on, I guess. Actually, no, we might not since it already has one. I already checked it. But if you do want spatialization, you might need to check it on. So we got that. And let's see. 
we should then just be able to click compile and save. Let's compile that and save that. And we should now be able to close it. And if we go to our blueprints, we see it right there. And I'm going to delete this old one out. And then if I drag and drop this in, why is it, is that small? It's hard to tell. Maybe it was scaled in the level. Um, but now that I drag and drop this in, I could add as many generators with sounds associated to it as I want. So let's try this out. Yeah, it must have been scaled up. And I think these are still working. Yep, so my occlusion from the others is still set up. And since that sound cue is associated with the correct sound class, we now get a fully functional generator. So that's the most basic way to set this up. But what if we wanted to have this also with a trigger? So it's kind of like you're walking up to it and you are going to hit the E key to start playing that sound rather than it just playing all the time. Because wouldn't that be nice to have it all kind of set up in its own little blueprint? Um, similar things you could do with this. You know, you could set up objects with its own sound and blueprint. So for like, like for instance, like door opens, like doors, like you could have it. So you have a trigger to open the door, it plays a door sound. Um, you have an alarm. Like on the, you know, you walk up or like a radio that it's already kind of all baked into one single object and you can drag and drop it in. So let's do that. Let's set up a blueprint so that it works like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just keep working with this generator live. I'm going to reopen it and make sure I go to my viewport. And I need to add a trigger box to this. Or So, um... Let's add a component. I'm going to go to here. And what we need to add is a box collision, which is, if I can find it. Let me try typing it in. Box collision right there. So a little bit different than what we've been working with, but this is what we want to use for this. So we're going to add it, and I'm actually going to name it Trigger Volume, since that's closer to what it's going to be actually doing. And we're going to just kind of use this really similar to how we've been using those trigger boxes. But um, we do need to kind of resize and reposition this, and we do have to have a we do have to do a little bit more to it than we've been doing. So let me position this better. Let me change the extents and this is going to be so that we're going to set it up so that if we are inside of here and press the E key it's going to allow us to turn on this generator so let's make sure you know we don't want it too big but we don't want it so small that it's going to be irritating for players to try and trigger this so let's maybe about that big and that should be sunk in enough and now um, once it's resized and it's positioned where you want it, we need to scroll down on the details to this collision area. And we're going to change just collision presets because we don't want this. We want to tell it specifically what we want. And we're going to just change it to a custom preset. And what we want to have happen, let's see, because we have to do a couple of special checks. First, we want to make sure that we're ignoring everything. So we're going to click on ignore for everything, just to start with. Because all we want to do is we want to turn the pawn setting back to overlap. Because the pawn is the player, remember? And we don't want anything else to trigger a collision, just the player. And that should be it for that setting. The next is going to be to set up our blueprint underneath the event graph for this. So let's compile and save before we jump over there. Let's go to the event graph. And in here is where we're going to do our um, 
coding. And notice there's already a couple, there's an event begin overlap um, in here. And let's see, I don't think we need these. So we're just going to delete that and delete that. And we want to have an actor begin overlap and an actor end overlap. And we kind of did this in a previous video. So if, um, I'm gonna go through it again real quick, but um, this should be pretty straightforward. So I'm gonna right click, let's see, actor, let's see. I always have a hard time finding this. This, this one's a little bit different. Let's see. Let's see if we can find first. Maybe it'll be a little bit easier if we do. Um, okay, we're gonna pull off here. And we want an enable input node. It's a little bit different than last week. And what we're looking for, enable, in, enable input. There it is. And then we need to get an event actor and overlap. We don't have one in here. Let's see if we can find it. Event actor and overlap. There it is. And we want to put a disable input node in here. Just trying to show you a little bit of a different way how to do this this time. And we're gonna look for our E key. So let's find an empty spot and search for key E. Sometimes this one can be kind of hard to find. Let's see if I can find it. Oh, it should be in this list. And we are almost there, we're getting there. Oh, sorry, this needs to go over here. I missed a step over here, so. Um, we need to get a get player controller node for over here. Sorry about that. Get player controller. And we're going to connect this input on the enable input and the disable. I'm going to make sure this is, I'm sorry. I just want to make sure I'm telling you the wrong. Yep, it's on the player controller. So we're going to hook it up here and hook it up here. So we have our key E, that's the thing, sorry, up here that we searched for. And we are going to then pull off what happens, what happens when it's pressed. And we're going to play. And we want to play that sound cue. So let's see, let's select and drag that generator cue and we are going to play that. So what happens is we are going to allow the player to get input when our player enters into that that box we set up, that trigger volume. And when we're out of there, we're gonna disable the input so that rather than using the gate, 
we're going to be able to, um, you know, last week we did a gate. This week we're, we're doing it with the enabling input and disabling input. And we should be good to go with this now. So let's compile this. We'll save it. And I want to double make sure that, oh, yep, it does. Do you see the box? I think, actually, I think I remembered one thing we need to do. Let's go back to that sound cue. And let's make sure we disable it um, so it's not playing at start. Auto activate. Let's turn that off. I think we need to do that. Let's compile and save it again. And I'm going to squish this up so I can look at it while I'm playing. Squish this up. Put this right about there. And I should be able to see it good enough. Okay, let's play and see what happens. So we don't hear it. And it runs now. Since this is a looping sound, it will play forever. And um, we can't turn it off. Um, it would be pretty easy to figure out how to turn it off if we wanted to. But if you really just wanted it to stop playing, um, we could just you know change that sound cue so that it is not looping. Not as a hint, but I feel that that is closer to something that is in your assignment for the week. So let's try that again. So we walk up. Turn it on. And then it's done. If we're over here, E doesn't do anything. We can't trigger that. If we go back up to it and we hit E, it does trigger that. So it's just a little bit of a different way to set this up so that um, you can have triggerable objects so that they trigger sounds. And the nice thing too, we can now place these generators all over the place. So we never have to code that again. So this is a really, you know, a better way to do things. So we, if we needed this in multiple levels, multiple places in the level, we set it up once and we're done. We don't have to try to do blueprints for everything. So let's talk a little bit about this project. So let me pull up Blackboard. And the lab is called sound volumes because that's what we're kind of focusing on so first things first you need to play through it you need to figure out what kind of sounds you need because we need the whole thing to have just sounds in general so oops let me go to the beginning of the level you start in that hol holodeck so make sure that that has sounds probably just you know it should have some kind of ambient and then you enter into the war zone space. And it is meant to be kind of like a war zone, like there was a battle here and it's over, but you'd probably hear, you know, specific sounds in here. There's a lot of destruction, like this light. Is there a light hanging down? Yeah, like this light just kind of hanging down. Um, we have a stereo in here that needs to be triggerable. We'll talk about that more in a second. And then when we go outside, you know, it looks like this. There's probably going to be war sounds out in the distance. We have these, you know, loudspeakers. We have this long walk all the way down to this tank. And, you know, tanks have very loud engines. You probably are going to have to have, you know, build a sound cue that has multiple attenuations that have different levels of sound, because remember, Farther away, the higher frequencies you don't hear, so you probably just hear a low rumble. And then when you got closer, another sound would kick in, like you know, like higher sounds until you get really close on top of it. It would be like the full 
frequency sounds. So you're probably going to build a sound cue that has specific attenuation set to it. Like I don't want to see a bunch of different, like three different sound cues in here. You need to start building them in one. And that's where that attenuation node comes in. Same thing with this fire. If we're standing back here, it's not going to be, you know, you're, you're going to probably hear some fire-ish sounds, but you're not really going to hear the full strength until you get here. And that might mean having different layers of sounds attenuating into existence, you know, as you get closer from the single sound cue. So we have a walk down the street, you know, it can't be dead silent. And then we have this building. And we have in this building our generator and another stereo because you need to set them up to have sounds embedded in their blueprints. The generator and stereo should use the E key to turn them on. And um, eventually we, you know, they should turn off. We don't want to have looping. They should just turn off, you know, eventually just by the, the sound cue stopping. Uh, let's see, the sound cues set up should have their attenuation set in the sound cue. So we're looking to have it all kind of comboed into one. So in here, in this room, this big building, you need to do occlusion. And what we're kind of looking for is, you know, these two would probably be pretty loud and these rooms and those pillars are going to occlude. Make sure, you know, we don't want these to only play for like a second. Give it, you know, a couple seconds, maybe 10 seconds so that you can quickly run into the different rooms and hear them. Maybe there's just an overall ambient also in here or something like that. I don't know. But um, we're still looking for an overall soundscape. So don't forget about that. Like when we're out in the street, it shouldn't be dead silent. What kind of sounds would you hear in this kind of environment? You also need to make sure that you are using reverb volumes and there shouldn't be any gaps and you need to be efficient with this. So there should be as few reverbs as needed, but you need to use, you know, the exterior reverb sounds different than the interior. The reverb in this room sounds different than those rooms, but you want to be efficient. So make sure that you're nesting your reverbs with that. So let's see. If you want to recycle sound files from previous labs, feel free. Um, since we've done fire, you might have some other kind of sounds that are appropriate, but um, this is a little bit larger of a level. So make sure that you are playing through it. You have a good understanding. Oh, there's another generator. So there's actually two generators. So you're gonna to wanna to probably go through and replace them. There's two generators. There's two stereos. So make sure that those are working, both of them. Um, once you make your blueprint, you know, feel free to delete the one in the level and place your new one. And if the shadows are off, it's not the end of the world. Don't worry about that. So find everything that needs sound. Make sure you're making sounds for those. There's the sound on these burning barrels is probably going to be a little bit different than the tank on fire. So, you know, we're really looking to, I want to hear a nice soundscape. I don't want to be annoyed with the soundscape though, so make sure that you are trying to be realistic with it and um, you're not annoying me with it. But if you have any questions, make sure you talk to your instructor about that. But that should be it for this week.